So let's begin. Uh, as you can already see, as what's pre being presented on your uh, slide, so that's anti-aging secret. So what is aging? Aging has been a part of life ever since it was like created, ever since human beings have come into existence, ever since living beings have come into existence. Human beings uh, go through various phases of life, from being a child to then being a youth, to then being an adult. And with no doubt, youth being the best part of their life, you get a good health, you have a strong muscles, an efficient immune system, a sharper memory, and a healthy brain. These all are a characteristic of an ideal youth. The, even the hormones are working at their best capacity during the youth years, right? So, uh, as you've just begun, how about, how about we just um, get to know about some of these skin-related interesting facts? You will be really amazed to know that your skin renews itself in every 28 days. And uh, if you wonder how's that happening, that's because of the uh, shedding of the upper layer of your skin cells. So you get epidermis, you have dermis layer below it. So because of the old cells on your epidermis layer, uh, the shedding happens, and that's why um, your skin renews itself in every almost 28 days. Nextly, this one's really going to be for the girls, especially out there. Like going to bed with your makeup on can actually age you up to seven times faster than normal. So it's always good to take your makeup off before you go to bed. Don't get lazy. No matter how tired you are, get your makeup off. Nextly, the third is the average human being's skin has around 21 square feet of skin. Like that's around 300 million skin cells. Like that's seriously a miracle that uh, God has created in this universe like 300 million skill cells, and all of them are completely, um, you know, they're working on their own, they're doing on their own, and also the shedding happens. So that's an entire system of just skin working. As we move on, um, so what is anti-aging? Let's get to what is anti-aging. Anti-aging is a medicine that aims to maintain or achieve, um, irrespective of chronological age order, to make yourself look, stay healthy and biologically efficient, right? So today we'll be talking about all the anti-aging secrets that we'll be revealing. So uh, we, most of us are here for the hunt of natural, or for some of us, we are also here um, for trying to look out for the uh, cosmetic measures that are available out there in the market um, that actually work to make our appearance look more youthful. We have prepared a very fun and a very informative uh, webinar for you all. So if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, we'll try our best to answer it as fast as possible and in the most informative manner like possible from our behalf. So let's begin and let's just kick off with this. So what happens is, um, in anti-aging, there's a complete scientific community. So they, they are doing their everyday research to exclusively uh, find out different ways uh, that can slow or prevent or in the best possible case to actually even reverse the aging process, right? So anti-aging is something that's not just uh, working in a superficial manner. It's not something that you'd like just to see or uh, if it's just to feel it on your skin. There's a lot more to anti-aging. So that's also upon what happens inside your body. So it's like uh, you want your body to get anti-age from within. You want your organs to be working more efficiently. How can you do that? No cosmetic surgery will be able to um, get your inner body, uh, you know, more youthful. If you want your inner body detoxification, so how would you even do that? Um, but still, uh, we'll be focusing on both of the perspectives. We'll be focusing on the cosmetic procedures as well as the natural methods available out there for your outer uh, anti-aging, for your appearance wise in a superficial manner. And we'll be also discussing what you can do to detox your body with it. So with age, your skin becomes uh, very thin. It becomes lesser elastic. It becomes more fragile. And... Um, that's why the fatty tissues just below the skin decreases. And that's why you might even notice that you get bruises more often. It's like your skin is very much prone to get in um, injuries. You might get scratches more often. And it's not just the skin. It's like even the bones tend to uh, shrink in size and the density. That's why your bone gets weakened, making them very much more susceptible to fractures. 
okay you might even become um, a little bit like that's why the aged people even have a slight height difference because that's due to the bone uh, size that's getting shrinked even the muscles lose their strength their endurance their flexibility uh, there are many other factors um, that actually affect your coordination stability and your balance and to your astonishment your brain even goes undergoes a lot of changes um, there are many minor to major effects that come like your memory or thinking skills right so uh, a healthier a healthy older person might you know tend to forget uh, familiar names or words and they find it more difficult to perform multitasking at the same time compared to a younger person not just that uh, when we are talking specifically about skin there is a very decreased production of natural oil and due to this your it makes your skin look much more drier uh, you get wrinkles age spot and these all are the reasons these are kind of indications that shows that your body is getting aged it's trying to uh, show you that you need to take much better care of your skin your skin is more fragile okay so um now we have we'll be seeing both the perspectives like the medical treatment and the natural methods available um, I hope you can see it on your ski, uh, screen. The slide is being presented. Under medical treatment, uh, we have many options. We have botulinum toxin, also commonly known as known as Botox in the cosmetic market. We have dermabrasion therapy. Uh, we also have microdermabrasion therapy. We have laser skin resurfacing. Right, there are many many more methods out there available. When you come to natural, we'll have. Uh, options for going for healthy diet we have superfoods we have different moisturizing agents that are available we'll be talking all about that in detail we'll be discussing all the measures that are available okay so first uh, the first that one we'll be talking about will be Botox so how does the Botox cosmetic work firstly that that's we need to understand like how is this miracle happening okay so Botox cosmetic this thing works by temporarily blocking your nerve signals okay your muscle contraction so when it blocks this uh, contraction with the period of time in the course of time this improves the appearance of wrinkles around your eyes between the eyebrows or wherever you are like getting the Botox injection this can actually slow the formation of new lines by preventing the contraction of facial muscles and um, it's a very minimally invasive processor it does not involve any incision it does not require any general anesthesia so if you're concerned about pain or any kind of discomfort you feel a topical anesthetic or an eyes to just numb the treatment area is going to be perfect um, what happens is during the processor uh, your provider will use a very thin needle to administer uh, the Botox especially the type A injection this will be injected between the targeted areas uh, you usually need three injections uh, if you're working on your eyes so like if you're working on your crow feet these are basically the eye side line those are known as crow feet um, and this entire process will not be like much uh, time taking and on the average it will take nothing more than 10 minutes okay so now what areas of our body can be actually treated with Botox cosmetics uh, cosmetically they can be injected in fall uh, like mainly two areas like that's basically the area between the eyebrows also known as the glapular region this can treat uh, from moderate to severe level of frown lines on your forehead the next as I've already let you know that's around the eyes uh, to treat the commonly known as closed feet line nextly you don't need to even worry about like if it's uh, there's any side effects or anything so it's an FDA approval is there for Botox so that's not going to be an issue and also uh, not just cosmetic industry there are many other uh, treatments that actually uses Botox but if you're re really concerned about any risk or side effects that's going to be involved uh, yes minor bruising or discomfort uh, might occur but that should actually improve within a few days and it's not going to be an issue other side effects like that actually uh, you might like to take it into consideration would be swelling tiredness or headache or any kind of neck pain double vision blurred vision if you're feeling if you're getting drier eyes if you're having any kind of allergic reaction um, a rash itching any that like these are the symptoms that like you will have to contact your healthcare professional immediately so this is something like they would like to take care of better next uh, 
the next um, we'll be talking about dumb abrasion. This is the next treatment we'll be talking about. So, uh, what is dumb abrasion? Dumb abrasion is a processor for those people who want smoother skin. Okay, it's it's a it's also called a surgical skin planning. So, it's a processor where a dermatologist or any plastic surgeon uses a very specialized instrument to sand the skin. Okay, what is sanding of the skin? So, this is a uh, very abrasive or a planning action that improves the skin contour. How it works? It works because it scrapes away the top layers of the skin. And when it scrapes away the top layers of the skin, the lying beneath, uh, there's a smooth layer of skin. So that's what unveiled. So um, this gives a much smoother look to your skin. So it's an option if you want um, smoother skin for different skin irregularities, especially fine lines. Uh, sun damage, if you got wrinkles, if you have melasma, acne, acne scars. So these are the ones that could actually have a great improvement. Uh, there's something like it cannot very improve that's like birthmarks, if you have burns or if you have moles, that's not something like uh, dumb abrasion would be an option for you. Uh, the only drawback uh, that here it would be that uh, you'll have to be um, like you'll have to talk to your healthcare professional because your skin complexion could be a role when you are getting dumb abrasion therapy. So uh, you need to uh, be like uh, you check your eligibility criteria, especially if you are an Asian person or um, like if you have a relatively darker complexion, you might prefer other options because uh, there is a risk of a higher chance that it might discolor your skin permanently. So uh, that's something you have to take in mind. But other than that, people of all ages, children, like everybody can get it. So that's not an issue at all. Uh, the thing is that, but if you are on the older side, like if you have a more sagging skin, so you might just try to keep in mind that your skin might heal slower than expected. That's the only thing. Other than that, um, dermabrasion is an option open to all. Next. Um, the next we will be talking about will be chemical peel okay so chemical peel is not something uh, that's like you have to go to you know you have to go to a dermatologist you can even get the basic chemical peels um, to get it done in your home itself this process is also known as chemi exfoliation or it's also known as derma peeling so uh, this basically uses a chemical solution to improve the appearance of your skin in this treatment, a chemical solution is applied to your skin, which causes uh, some kind of trauma or injury to your skin layers. These skin layers, when they are injured, uh, they eventually peel off. So that's what reveals more youthful skin. And the new skin is usually smoother, with fewer lines, fewer wrinkles. Um, so that's how chemical peels actually work. Uh, now we need to, we can think of what conditions um, a chemical peel can treat. It can treat uh, skin conditions um, that are like fine lines, uh, certain types of acne, mild scarring, sun spot, eight spot, liver spot, you got freckles, or if there is any kind of skin pigmentation, uneven skin coloring, uh, any kind of scaly patches, or like these are the things that chemical peels can actually work on. Um, and the other thing that we have to understand is that um, sag bulges or any kind of deep scars, like anything that's like going very beneath into your skin, okay, like deep facial lines or very uh, severe wrinkles, like these don't really respond very well to the chemical peels. So for that, maybe you can uh, go for Botox or any other procedure available. Uh, that won't be an option. Like if that's your target, chemical peels might not be an option. Uh, the next one is like a very, very, very famous, I think like that's something we all have heard, laser, right? So laser skin resurfacing. So um, laser technique, uh, what it does, it, di it directs very short, very concentrated, pulsating beams of light at irregular skin. It uh, removes the skin very precisely, like layer by layer, and it removes it by vaporizing it. It removes the outer layers of the skin, so that's called as the epidermis layer. And it heats the below underlying layer, that's the dermis layer. Uh, what this actually stimulates is it stimulates the growth of new collagen fibers. And this results in a new skin that is much more smoother and a much more firmer. Uh, this popular procedure is also known as laser peel or it's also known as laser vaporization. 
okay but uh, there are some conditions that are uh, that will make you not a very good candidate for laser skin resurfacing like having excessive sagging skin or if you have a very active prone skin like if you have a very reactive skin uh, or if you have a very deep wrinkles so like in that case uh, maybe you are not going to be a good candidate for them uh, we can have like other procedures available. So how does laser skin resurfacing work? Um, there are like mainly uh, we'll have types divided as uh, there will be three types like carbon dioxide, erbium layer and these two layers will be having a common working procedure because they perform a very uh, uniform injury to your skin in the treatment area. The other, the third type of the laser skin resurfacing will be fraction uh, carbon dioxide laser treatment. This one involves uh, with a different working mechanism. So what this one does is it drills numerous narrow columns of holes deep into the layers of your skin. But with the surrounding skin, they remain untreated. So there's a not uniform damage that's done to your skin. But in case of uh, the RBM lasers can be surfacing and carbon dioxide laser resurfacing will have the lasers will perform a very uniform injury to your skin in the treatment area. So uh, these will be different uh, methods and they'll have uh, their own pros and their own cons. Firstly, we can talk about CO2 laser resurfacing. So this has been used for years and years uh, to treat, treat different malignant skin conditions. Um, a newer generation of carbon dioxide laser resurfacing uses a very short pulsed light um, energy that's also called, known as ultra pulsed or continuous light. Uh, these are the beams that are delivered in this very scanning pattern uh, to very precisely remove the thin layers of skin. It does a very minimal heat damage to the surrounding structures. Next we have erbium laser resurfacing. It's designed to remove the superficial and moderately deep lines. So um, your face lines like that, if you have that one, like this could be an option for you. Um, this laser can also be used on your hands, on your neck, and also on your chest, okay? So um, the main benefit of this laser resurfacing is that it can be used on different parts of your body. And the other thing is that it does a very minimal injury to your surrounding tissue. Uh, considering and comparing with, with the carbon dioxide laser resurfacing, this one causes a uh, comparatively fewer side effects than CO2 lasers. There's a lesser swelling, bruising, or uh, redness that's like much more common when it comes to carbon dioxide laser. Um, then third one that we have is fractional laser resurfacing. So fractional CO2 laser resurfacing delivers uh, many narrow columns of laser light to your skin as I already explained. So not much of your skin is injured. The advantage is that your skin tightens much more in this because uh, as the collagen between the treatment laser hole contracts that results in a skin that's also going to be much more firm. Uh, and the other benefit is that uh, not the entire treatment area is injured. So uh, that could be an another benefit. The only risk involved here is that the laser light penetrates much more deeply than other lasers. So uh, there could be a greater risk of complicated healing and complicated scarring. The recovery time, uh, that will be like around one week for almost all three of them. But I uh, would suggest and I really uh, recommend that you are not going to be the person yourself to choose which one is going to be the best for you. You should be getting um, full evaluation of your medical history of your current physical conditions and you need to be like completely aware about your desired results go and talk to a healthcare professional so they need to be certified and they are going to the, be the ones uh, who could like do the best decision for you in this scenario uh, do not like take this decision on yourself uh, after laser skin resurfacing the next one will be uh, microdermabrasion so uh, microdermabrasion is like a newer form of dermabrasion uh, but like there are many advantages like there are many pros over the dermabrasion therapy. It's a non-surgical method, uh, it's a very minimally invasive process and there's very little that you have to even do to prepare yourself for it. Okay, So uh, 
before you get to it, it's always a good idea to talk with a health skin care professional so to find out if microdermabrasion is uh, the right fit for you. Uh, discuss any past cosmetic procedures that you have done, any allergy uh, or if you have any medical conditions like you can talk about that before you even do this. Um, the other thing is that the uh, only thing that you have to do is you have to avoid the sun exposure or any kind of tanning creams or waxing for about 7 to 10 days before the therapy starts, right? Um, so how does microdermabrasion work? It's a very in-office procedure, it takes about an hour, it's performed by licensed care professionals and um, you might not have to necessarily use any anesthesia or a numbing agent. Uh, during the appointment, um, the professional or the provider will use a handheld device uh, to gently spray on, on the particles or stand with the outer layer of the skin. So that's a, that's a similar working mechanism to the dumb abrasion that we just discussed earlier. At the end of treatment, um, a moisturizer or a sunscreen that could be applied, applied to your skin and you might still be asked to avoid the sun exposure for the next two to three days. Okay, so these were about the major uh, processors that were like cosmetic processors out there but it's not just them there are many other options available uh, there are many other treatments uh, cosmetic processors over the natural methods they have their own benefits it's not like one win over the other or you prefer one over the another not even I can suggest so everything depends upon uh, how much time are you willing to put in what what is like your desired result what do you expect uh, what is your budget like many things come into action and that's like overall going to decide what is going to be the best option for you there's a natural methods option like they are going to have a relatively fewer side effects but they might be taking a little bit more time and they might not give you that level of desired results as the cosmetic surgery would provide on the other hand uh, all these surgeries or all these treatments they're going to be uh, comparatively expensive these are going to have um, relatively higher chances of side effects but they're definitely going to have a very fast and a relatively uh, much better results in a very short span of time but now we also have to understand what are these natural methods and the best thing about natural method is it does not just make it from outside this is these are the methods that work within the body they detox your body within so uh, they make your body uh, feel younger so that's that's something that's happening uh, with the internal organs in your body it's never too late to start taking care of your skin and we have to not forget the inside as well so let's begin with that so what would be the first one that we'll be talking about definitely going to be the exercise like what would else be for a safe, long-lasting, all-natural, cost, uh, very cost-effective and a healthy beauty weapon, you really need to look no further than your neighborhood gym. This is the best way to blemish your uh, free skin, to get a fewer wrinkles, to get a strong healthy hair and to also detox the body within. So exercise has an overall uh, very revitalizing effect Regular exercises also mean improved blood circulation to the extremities in your body, to your fingers, to your fingernails, your toes, your toenails and everything. In fact, the exercise benefits the body as a whole because it improves the strength of the circulatory as well as the respiratory system in your body, which means improved oxygenation. That means you have better oxygenation, you get better oxygenated blood. So that's where uh, things come into play. A regular exercise improves the health of the skin by improving the blood circulation to the skin surface. So this helps to supply essential nutrients to the skin. Uh, and on not just that, aerobic exercise or even normal exercises make you sweat and this promotes the removal of toxins through the perspiration process. Exercising relieves stress, it lowers your cortisol levels in the blood, so this eliminates the overall production of sebum, that, that's basically uh, the reason why there's blocked pores on your skin. So additionally, uh, when it creates sweat, so uh, this clean out the pores, it removes the dead skin cells, or any oils or chemicals that build up over time on your skin. Flushing out all these toxins, you remove uh, chances of existing acne. Uh, you also get to detox the body with the foreign particles on your skin. So 
if you want to look good, put on your sports suit, just work up a sweat, like that's going to be a really good option for you. Next, after uh, the exercise, the other option that if you don't want to go out, if you want to just do something, staying at your home, yoga will be an option. When we're talking about yoga, firstly we'll be talking about face yoga. This works mainly on your facial muscles, the contraction of your facial muscles. Face yoga is a very specific form of yoga targeted to improve the facial muscles that will make you feel and look younger. It's uh, extremely beneficial for those who want a very glowy, youthful skin. Um, as you can already see it on the slide, there are various um, things that like poses that you can do with your face and your facial muscles uh, to get them in like these uh, shapes. You can puff your cheeks, you can lift your eyebrows um, to get to lift your eyebrows um, half an inch above the brows, place your index finger, lift your brows upwards while pressing them downwards with your fingertips. You can repeat this like around 10 to 12 times per day. And uh, because our forehead is the first location like this where the wrinkles occur because that's like we always frown our, get frown lines on our forehead. Uh, this is the first location where these occur. So completing the specific exercises will tone these muscles. Um, it will also help you to relax tension and uh, lessen the appearance of any fine lines on your face. You could also do the stretching of the eyelids exercise in the facial yoga. Uh, this is just like any other physical exercises. You need to do it um, in a very regular manner. Um, it, you, you need to diligently include it in your daily routine. So that's uh, like when you added benefit is when you do these exercises um, in a more regular manner and that's what gives you the uh, desired results that you're expecting from facial yoga. You don't need to even give much time like around 30 to 45 minutes each day that could be like really like enough for it. Next, uh, when we have talked about face yoga, we need to talk about other forms of yoga that works on the body as well. First, both that we'll be discussing about will be uh, Dhanurashana, okay? So Dhanurashana, also known as Gabbo pose. The word Dhanurasana comes from the word Dhanush. So Dhanush means the bow, the bow, uh, you know the bow and arrow thing? Like that's where uh, the Dhanush, that means the bow part is known as Dhanush. That's the shape that your body will be forming when you're performing this asana. So that's where it gets its name, Dhanurashana. So, um, what are the prerequisites for Dhanurasana? Uh, because it bends your body and your spine in a concave manner. You need to just make sure that you do it four to five hours um, like before having your main meal. It's best to do this pose in the morning. However, for some reason, if you are like unable to do it at that point of time, include it in your evening practice, that will also be fine. Um, what are the benefits of Dhanurasana? So it strengthens the back, it uh, strengthens your abdominal muscles. Um, the thing is that it also stimulates your reproductive organs. It opens up the chest, your neck, your shoulders, it tones the leg, your arm muscles, it adds a uh, much greater flexibility to your back, it elevates stress, your fatigue, and even um, this is like being seen to relieve uh, menstrual discomfort and even constipation in the people. Um, also, it's recommended to people with having any kidney-related disorders or uh, also known as renal disorders. So that was about Dhanurashana. Your body comes in a concave-like bow-like pose. And uh, like this one is a very common asana. And it's like um, go to the people like that's one of the first asana people usually perform. Other than uh, Dhanurashana, the next asana that we'll be talking about will be Paschimottasana. That's also known as seated forward bend asana. So uh, this one is going to be a little tough uh, compared to the one we already talked about earlier, Dhanurashana. So in this case, uh, your body will be bended in a concave, like in, in an altered position like this your um, fingers, your hands will be touching your toes and your legs need to be completely straight when you're sitting on that and you'll rest your head on your knees. Um, similar to all yogas, this also has many benefits. 
the one benefit that will be like specific to this that will be a belly fat reduction um pashupatasana may be considered a very good yoga pose if you want to uh, reduce your belly fat if you are overweight if you are trying to lose weight for a, a long period of time uh regularly practicing pashupatasana or seated forward bend might resolve your problem uh also other than that um this might help you to calm your mind to reduce anxiety it provides a very soothing effect on your body this extends the abdominal wall uh which may aid in strengthening the abdominal muscles so that means a better digestion system as well uh the next thing is that it also helps to stretch the hamstrings okay hamstrings are like the strings the uh, the muscle pieces that are um on the backward position of your thighs so uh it helps them to get the stretch and they become more stronger it makes them more flexible and it allows them to lose their tightness um it also helps to keep your spine healthy it stretches the entire spine making it uh, much more flexible it uh, helps you to get relieved with constipation uh, dyspepsia problems like uh, by enhancing the digestion problems um if you're doing this asana for the first time you might not be able to do it like uh, in the picture perfect manner uh, so there are some modifications um that you might try when you're doing it for the first time you can take a rolled blanket or a cushion and keep it under your hips uh, to add more length to your spine so that you can reach it also uh, in the beginning if you are not having completely like straight legs if you are not being able to uh, uh if you're not being able to like uh, have completely 180 degree uh, form with the legs so that will not going to be an issue you can like start with trying to do it every day day by day and then you will be able to do it uh the next asana that we'll be talking about will be adho mukha savasana so uh, uh, this is uh, something like okay i've presented the slide okay this is the downward facing dog uh this is also the asana that has been included among the 12 asanas in the surya namaskar pose so what surya namaskar pose let's first uh, understand that that's going to be uh the one that you have um you know you pray to the rising of the sun in a very early morning this asana this uh surya namaskar is only performed uh during the time interval when the sun is on rise uh it has selectively 12 asan means 12 yoga poses that are linked in such an order that one follows the other and uh, this complete uh, surya namaskar is considered to be a very um, uh, you know a very good option for those who want to uh, bring the lifestyle of yoga in the normal lifestyle so uh, this adho mukha savasana that we will be discussing now is also a part of surya namaskar this is also known as downward facing dog some benefits that will be um it, it it's a very good asana for hypertension okay it helps you to lower your high blood pressure as it boosts uh, the blood flow to your brain uh, this allows the heart rate to slow down this feature may be good to fight the factors contributing to excessive blood pressure uh it may also help to reduce your stress by calming the central nervous system the other benefits would be it it is a very good option for those having chronic lower back pain uh the main reason why you even get uh, the l- chronic low back pain is because of the imbalance of weak muscles and poor posture so this is going to assist you to get fixed on that um also there has been a study in 2019 that uh, shows that the uh, downward facing dog position may help you to strengthen your arm muscles your legs and your lower body so that's why it will help uh, the people having chronic low back pain it also helps to stretch your chest your back your calves your feet and relieve you uh, with the pain in these areas uh so um uh we have talked about the benefits about um the uh, adho mukha savasana also known as the downward facing dog so i would like everyone to just like try definitely this one like this is going to be a very effective asana um next we'll be talking about the next asana that's also uh the cobra pose also known as the bhujangasana okay 
So what is Bhujangasana? How it's performed? As you can see it in the slide being presented, like this is the shape your body will be going to form during Bhujangasana. Uh, Bhujangasana is said to be a wholesome asana. It has uh, many several benefits that may help to manage your health, enhance your spiritual level. Uh, some of the potential benefits will be uh, for the belly fat reduction again here. So, uh, you know, a big tummy is no one's favorite and it may even cost you your self-esteem if you are like not being able to accept it. So this is believed to be one of the best asanas again to help you to achieve um, a washboard abdomen without like that's worth and why. The benefits of this asana may uplift your physical appearance, uh, your beauty, stretching your abdominal muscles and have some great effect on flattening the abdominal area. <laughs> okay, the next benefit would be for blood circulation. The key is to have a good blood circulation to stay energized and stay very active. Bhujangasana mainly helps to improve the blood circulation to help the cells receive uh, sufficient oxygen and nutrients. So improved blood circulation means also improved hormonal balance. So that's overall going to be a very good for your body. This asana is also good for managing your stress and relieving your mind. So if you're uh, suffering from depression, anxiety, uh, this may help you to overcome at least like some of the effects of stress. In studies, it has been found to helpful in people in combating symptoms of stress, like headache, or if you're having fatigue, if you're having weakness, it may also have some effect on managing, uh, help you manage depression related issues. However, if you have like uh, these uh, related mental health care problems, it's definitely best to take a, uh, expert advice or to get some therapy. Like those are going mm, to be the other option. But aside, like by side by side, like that's the two things that can work very parallelly, going to a doctor, taking expert advice and bringing things like meditation, bringing things like yoga in your daily life schedule, like that's also going to be a very effective manner. Uh, also, in this there is a very stretching of spine that happens when you are performing this asana. So this is going to be very helpful uh, to give your back a very reasonable extension. It will help you to strengthen your spine. Uh, the mechanism and steps involved in this asana will be um, like designed, have been designed in such a way that it helps to stretch your lower and upper back. But the one we, we talked about earlier that was helping uh, with people with chronic back pain. But the people with chronic back pain are usually suggested to not um, try the cobra pose or if they are trying to consult a doctor before they try this one. Okay. So there are many, many benefits that come like in a single package when you are doing Bhujanga Asana. So um, like this is one of the asanas that you can also bring into your life schedule. The next asana that we will be talking about will be Trikona Asana. So what is Trikona Asana? What is, where does this word come from? Like Trikona means triangle, something, a regular figure, any geometrical figure having uh, three sides. And that's basically a triangle and having the sum of angles is 180 degree. That's what's known as Trikona. And that's where we come with this name Trikona Asana, also known as the triangle pose. So Trikona Asana is a standing yoga, yoga asana with several benefits. It helps you with the overall development of your mind, your body, your um, overall spirit. So main benefit of Trikona Asana will be for legs. The lateral bending in Trikonasana may help lengthen the muscles of your leg. It helps you to strengthen the calves, your thighs, your legs. So um, it also helps you to enhance the flexibility of hamstrings. So if you don't know what hamstrings are, these are the muscles that are on the back of your thighs. Okay. So uh, other benefits will be it also is very good for your spine because you are involving bending in a sideways manner. So improves your spine flexibility. The other benefit will be for digestion. So in digestion, like occurring any time in your age group, like it's always a discomfort, like no doubt. So if you're suffering from an upset stomach, try Trikonasana. It's said that it's beneficial for many people. The next benefit will be for the hips. So it helps to loosen the tightened hips muscles. It helps in stretching of the hips. So that improves the flexibility of your hip area and your hip muscles. There are many other benefits involved as well. 
it helps to improve the overall blood circulation again it helps you to strengthen your waist your back muscles it helps to enhance the groin flexibility so um, also outstretching your hands in Jagannathana is going to improve the strength and the flexibility of your arms as well okay so uh, now since we have talked about uh, many yoga poses we can um, talk about facial massage okay so facial massage is uh, like people usually uh, get confused between facial yoga and facial massage no they're they're like very different from one another they have uh, some common um, advantages that they give to your skin but they are different and it's a good idea to have a regular uh, schedule of both of them you can do face yoga every day facial massage is like something you can do once a day if you are doing it on your own if you are doing it uh, like if you are doing it like once in two or three days that's also fine so incorporating the facial massage techniques into your daily skincare routine uh, this can be the secret to not only your improved radiance but also to a firmer and wrinkle free face okay so how um, does this facial massage work it works like um, basically because uh, the kneading the skin improves circulation more oxygen better absorption of products better oxygenated blood um, reach to your skin cells so that's what gives a more glowing, youthful, radiant skin to your body. Facial massage uh, is the key to looking younger skin. And uh, there are many uh, facial massage poses that you can try. Like uh, the first will be long tiger strokes upward in line with the cheekbones. So this helps and tighten our face muscles. The next will be uh, the light tapping that stimulates the lymphatic system. The next will be massaging your neck downwards. Okay, so this is a point that you have to keep in mind. You need to massage your neck downwards, not upwards. Okay. Um, the next will be if you do really uh, eye side massage. So that will be stroke from inside the eye socket area towards the outer area. So for the best results, uh, you can also uh, include high quality facial oil so that will improve your uh, the outcomes of your facial massage as well the next thing we'll be talking about will be moisturizing agents okay this is something like this is something very basic like um, you do not want to miss getting a moisturizer like before you uh, get off your home like you're going to your workplace or anywhere this is not something that you'd like to miss something that you have to do every day like just before going to bed apply um, the natural moisturizing agent if you're going outside you can apply some moisturizer as well so uh, when you're talking about moisturizing agents there will be three types of moisturizing agents okay you have emollients you have occlusive and you have hemestin okay all three of them are having different working processes like they have different mechanisms of how they work on the skin firstly emollients these are the compounds that help to manage the rough, dry skin, resulting in soft and smoother skin. Examples could include uh, cocoa butter, shea butter, or argan oil, avocado oil, broccoli oil, uh, mango butter, almond oil, castor bean oil, palm oil, um, olive oil. So emollients have to be applied. Uh, you, you need to wash your hands before or like you have you can apply them after shower like this is the time when the skin requires more moisturization right the next will be occlusives so how do occlusives work they work by forming a physical barrier on the skin to prevent uh, trans epidermal water loss so what is this it's a loss of water through the outer layer of the skin so it basically forms a physical barrier so there's a lesser loss of water through the skin layer that keeps the skin more moisturized there are many natural ingredients with occlusive properties such as huba oil, coconut oil, uh, waxes such as candelilla wax or beeswax. So to use as a moisturizer, it's, uh, it's better to use occlusive uh, ingredients along with light ingredients. Mm, and uh, you can also use uh, the occlusive and hematins together. So that also gives a very good effect on your skin. The third will be hematins. So how do these function? These function by extracting the water from the inner layers of your skin. They bring the inner layer of the water to the outer layer of your skin. They bind the water vapor, uh, like um, also binding the water vapor from the atmosphere. Um, examples 
uh, could be um, hyaluronic acid, honey, uh, glycerin, glycerol, or like even uh, like honey something would be like you get it in your home and you can use it like on a daily basis. So uh, this would be also applied uh, right after taking your bath when your skin is still wet, like not after your skin is dry. Uh, while there's a lot of moisturization on your skin, you can apply these so that will help you to bring the moisturization to the outer layer of your skin. Okay. Um, also, these are the ones that you have to be um, like you have to rub them before applying to your face, and uh, you have to give it time to let it get absorbed and let it do their work. Right, so like that's about moisturizing agents. Like um, moisturizing agents and sunscreens, like these are the things like that's very common and basic and should not be skipped. Like any day when you are going out to work because there are many harmful radiations out there. So these are some things you have to keep in mind. Next, as I already mentioned, uh, we'll be talking about sun exposure, right? So how to protect our skin from the sun? The sun has many, uh, like you have ultraviolet radiations out there. You have both UV and UVA as well as UVB radiation. So it's, it's a very good option, idea for you if you use the sunscreen every day. Like even if it's cloudy out there, if it's rainy, it doesn't matter. The radiation is still out there, right? So you have to use sunscreen every day. You need to apply at least one ounce of sunscreen. Um, 50, and you need to do it like around 15 to 30 minutes before going outside. Also, you should apply lip balm like to protect your lip area, your lip skin. Uh, you can also use lip balm or lipstick, uh, lipstick that contains uh, sunscreen with a sun protection factor that also known as SPF of at least 30. Or if you are living in those regions where the sun uh, radiations are like uh, really harsh, uh, you should try to get an SPF of around above 50. So, um, when you're choosing a sunscreen, you need to choose a very broad spectrum sunscreen that protects you against both UVA as well as UVB radiation. Okay, you need to make sure it's water resistant. Okay, it has an SP of at least above 30. And uh, uh, there could be other sunscreens out there that could actually help you from uh, protecting you from getting sunburned. But but they won't be able to protect you against skin cancer. As we know that the UV radiations are uh, cancerous in nature. They cause skin-related cancer. So applying um, a good quality of sunscreen might help you to get and stay at a lesser chance of risk involved uh, from getting skin cancer due to the UV radiation. The next thing, um, like you need to reapply your sunscreen every like around two to three hours. Especially if you are swimming or if you are sweating, if you are working outdoors, you have to like do it uh, in a much uh, faster regular interval. Um, the other thing is that you need to be extra careful when you are around water area or sand area. Like These are the places that uh, reflect the um, damaging rays of the sun uh, in a much, uh, you can say like they reflect a lot of the UV radiations. So, um, when you are around these water, like large water bodies, or if you are like around the desert area, these areas you have to like apply hefty amount of sunscreen on your face, on your body, like any skin that's open to your body. It's not just limited to your facial skin. It's it's open to like having uh, it on your hands, your skin, your legs, your back, any part that's open to your uh, direct exposure to this atmosphere. The babies who are younger than six months. They need to be completely covered. They need to remain in shade, okay? And also, on your personal uh, behalf, you can try to limit the amount of time you are in the sun, like if possible. Um, it's around, mainly around 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. If you uh, can avoid going out of the sun, if you can work indoors, if you can work in an office reason, or like if, if that's possible from your behalf, you can just limit your amount of time. Because this is the time when the sun rays are most intense, okay? So, um, if also possible, uh, you should try to wear long sleeve shirt or long pants if you are like living in those regions where the sun rays are very harsh. And um, accessories like getting your hat or um, getting yourself sunglasses, like these, these are the accessories that could also help you to protect your skin and your body from sun every day. Uh, the next would be um, that you need to also taking care in mind that you have to be more cautious if you are taking medications. 
So this, there are some medications that make your body more sensitive to a spe, uh, sun uh, that include specific types like of antibiotics, anti-inflammatory, antifungals, uh, blood pressure medications, or chemotherapies as well. So if you're undergoing any of these procedures, you need to be more cautious. Okay, so after getting skin protection, what about some foods like superfoods? Um, it's a very important thing that we have a very healthy, very balanced diet in our, our body. Uh, we have to have a good intake of food, something that covers all the necessary ingredients, proteins, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, everything. So this is something uh, also known as, there are many super foods, okay? These are the foods that um, have a lot of good um, antioxidants or they have a good quantity of uh, vitamins and minerals that are going to be very good for your body, very good for your skin. So some of these could be avocados, walnuts, broccoli, tomatoes, green tea, uh, vegetables, black seeds, paddlefish. Uh, we'll have ginger, uh, ginger tea, and um, we'll have papaya. There's red bell pepper. There is also uh, blueberries like. Uh, these are like uh, the ones that are going to be very rich in vitamin A, vitamin C. So um, there are many superfoods available in the market. So according to the season, according to your geographical location, what is available, you can try different of them and you should be trying to include them in your regular diet. So that gets a part of your uh, diet that your body receives day to day. Okay, so the first one, uh, we'll be seeing about antioxidants. Okay. So antioxidants are um, like nutrition uh, and the antioxidants are like these are those that work on your body skin by limiting the radical processor, okay, like free radical processor. Now what is free radical? You need to understand that first. Uh, these results mainly in our normal, as a result of normal body processes. Uh, they can also be created um, due to the exposure to various environmental factors. Um, it can also result in your body such as smoking or due to the UV radiation from the sun and could actually speed up the aging processor. So free radicals, uh, if there's anyone from the chemistry background would understand that, but free radicals are like the ones that initiate the free radical reaction. So uh, this actually speed up the radical reaction in our body, in our skin, that actually makes our body um, like look-wise, it makes them look much more older. So antioxidants are those food that helps to prevent the agents called free radicals. Okay, so um, next we need to know that which are those foods that are very uh, rich in antioxidants, okay? Um, so here we read it out. Vitamin D, that's also known as D-alpha tocopherol. It's a fat-soluble vitamin, so, um, and this is present in nuts, seeds, vegetables, fish oil, whole grains, and um, even in, uh, you'll get it in bell pepper, so many foods today that, that are also fortified with this powerful antioxidant, okay? The next antioxidant will be vitamin C. So vitamin C is also known as ascorbic acid, okay? It's a water-soluble water, uh, vitamin. It's uh, present in citrus fruits and juices. So that will be orange, lemon, uh, peppers, uh, broccoli, so kiwi, strawberries, okay? The third will be beta-carotene. So it's a precursor to vitamin A and it's present in protein uh, rich foods mainly. So that will be egg, milk, butter, uh, carrots, uh, you'll have tomatoes, you'll have peaches, whole grains like um, flour, like you have also um, the um, whole grain flour. You can also intake that in your regular diet. That will be much easier uh, for you. The other will be, uh, you can also have a large amount of in antioxidants in uh, Brazil nuts, you will have in sardines, uh, tuna fish, okay, and there's also a lot of antioxidants in papaya, like papaya is a fruit that's uh, easily available to everyone, and papaya is something that has a lot of advantages, it's, it's a very delicious of a food, okay, it's rich in variety of uh, antioxidants, rich in vitamins, rich in minerals, so it uh, helps to get your, it can also be used as a face mask on your face if you're like trying to use that or if you can directly intake it in your regular diet as well. It um, minimizes the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Um, 
papaya includes vitamin A, vitamin C, K, and E as well. So it also includes calcium, potassium, magnesium, phosphorus. And uh, these all range of antioxidants in papaya helps to fight uh, the free radical damage. Okay. The next uh, we'll be talking about is uh, okay ginger. So ginger is uh, something if there's anyone who has a background with some knowledge from Ayurveda scene, like this has been used since like history, like since ages, it's been used in the many households. Ginger, it's used when you are suffering from cold. If you have got flu, mix it with honey, it's going to be great. If you want a good radiant skin, mix it with honey. Or even if you want to directly uh, use, like if you want to intake as uh, ginger tea or if you want to directly intake ginger, it's also going to be great there. It has uh, like one of the really good antioxidants present are there in ginger. The other thing is that as the skin is uh, the largest organ, it's recommended to, we need to uh, keep the main focus when you are talking about anti-aging on the skin related factors, right? So ginger is a very natural remedy for inflammation reduction. It improves blood circulation, which leads to a younger looking skin. It's a very uh, a versatile anti-aging herb. It has been used since traditional Chinese and Ayurvedic medicines, as I already mentioned. So um, this has also uh, been beneficial in relation to the digestive health because of its anti-inflammatory um, um, because of its anti-inflammatory uh, the results that it shows when it's being used. It helps to boost the overall immune system as well. So uh, ginger, what it has, it has a compound that's known as gingerol. So that's the main antioxidant, and that. That's what helps to boost your skin to produce more collagen. Collagen helps you to form your skin more. So either you can directly intake ginger or the other option that we'll be talking about will be ginger tea. Like we love taking tea and coffee and on our regular diet. So uh, how can you make ginger tea first of all? Okay, you can make, there will be two options. You can either intake your ginger with local honey and get into hot water. That's also going to give you miraculous, like absolutely amazing and aging benefits. So the other could be you can directly uh, boil the ginger in around uh, water, and then you can also put some fresh lime juice or lemon juice to taste uh, to add some taste in that. And that's the other option how you can intake the ginger tea. Uh, why? Honey is also recommended is that because it has antibacterial properties, it helps to reduce inflammation as well. So honey and ginger has been like proved and has been used since ages because they have um, really great benefits when they are combined together. Not just like superficially but inner detoxification when we talk about, when we talk about um, good organs uh, working in good conditions like ginger and honey could be a great combo that you can come up with. Okay, so the next, the option when you're talking about anti-aging is that we'll have to talk about mental health as well, right? So you cannot be stressed all day, you cannot be like having all those, um, you know, pressures on your mind about your work or about your academics or whatever, like whatever field you are working in your life in. Hobbies are um, like an option, go-to option for everyone. Like we love to perform our hobbies, but what happens is that in this, um, like you know, uh, century, like when we come talking about the decade of 2020s, many people have become so work focused. Like they are trying to work on their career so much, we actually forget. Uh, we forget to enjoy our life. We forget to perform our hobbies, something that we love, right? So whatever you love, you love reading books, you love reading novels. Go out, read them. You love uh, making music, go out, make that. You love having, uh, performing dance, go out, do that as well. You want to paint, you like art, uh, whatever, like whatever you, your hobby is. Please have on find some time, like maybe one hour or two hour a week, like just that much. Or if you're not being able to do that as well, like maybe one or two hours per like two weeks, you can allocate the time according to your schedule or according to your work schedule. Hobbies, like they keep your mind active, they keep your mind healthy, they keep you in a good mood, it has to relieve your stress. So 
uh, you can like perform your hobby. You can do it if you want to do it alone. Or I'd also recommend you to enjoy this uh, time allocated with your loved ones, with your family, with your friends. You you are gonna feel great. You are gonna have uh, you know inner happiness. That you can, that's why you're gonna feel in that. Um, it has also been proven that the people who perform their hobbies on a regular basis have uh, numerous health benefits have been seen among them. This is. Um, a method for de-stressing your body. It helps you to re uh, prevent stress. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful hobby. It helps to keep your mind sharp. Uh, so I like really recommend everyone to uh, not forget what your hobby is and just like get into the career rat race. Um, also, please take time for your mind to perform you like your hobby and uh, you know you need to feel good from inside. That that's like that's what life is. Like you only get one chance to live your life. Please do not uh, like forget to live it as well when you're uh, focusing on your work career life. So. Uh, the we have been coming to an end to the webinar and to the informative portion. Uh, now I would like to talk about um, the company, the ascending nature that like uh, they have actually organized this entire webinar for you. Uh, this company is operated by licensed doctor of pharmacy and trained healthcare professional. So um, you you will not have to worry about um, like anything that's going to be misguided or anything that's going to be um, you know if you're not going to get it anything that's approved of any manner since it's managed by professionals everything will be of top notch quality they offer you uh, many packages in a very affordable range uh, like if you want to get um, if you want to lose in your body weight if you want a personalized plan for you that's completely dedicated according to what you want what what is uh, your main goal what is the way that you want to achieve so and uh, anything like if uh, you are um, you know allergic to any food or any uh, food that that's not good for your body or any medications you are on, so that makes you avoid any special category of food. So keeping all of that in mind, you'll have a personalized um, you know a routine plan for you made by the healthcare professionals. That's going to be of a great assistance if you want to lose in your weight. They also have healthcare supplements on their website. Please check it out. I will um, I'll leave a link to their website in the chat box as well. I've also uh, seen given it in the slide as well. You can uh, visit their website if you want to refer for health coaching, uh, for weight loss products, for health related products. Please visit this website. I'm just sending you the link. Um, did it reach everyone? I hope I sent it to everyone. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, this is the website, and you all can please go check it out. This, you're going to be. Um, like having an amazing time uh, you can like when you're going through the health coaching I assure you that you will have great results if you are if the site is not working I've also given you the QR code for directly accessing the website you can take the screenshot if you want or if you want like right now scan it using your mobile phones or like any handheld device you have got there that's also possible or please take a screenshot for any later use if you want to like maybe scan it later like uh, later in the day or later in the week whenever you are down for it okay so with uh, this I'd also like to mention that on behalf of uh, Ascending Nature they have given out a coupon code for you all so like get 20 webinar uh, will be the coupon code all in capital like all will be in caps get 20 webinar this will help you to receive 20 percent off on all the health coaching packages it's this offer is for a limited time only so please rush and get it out check it out and enjoy this coupon code um, the other coupon code will be get 25 so this will help you to get 25 percent off on the health and wellness product so if you are preferring to buy products get 25 and if you're going for coaching packages get 20 webinar also this complete webinar has been recorded um, you will be provided the Google Drive link you want to watch it anytime just open the link 
play the webinar and you will be able to watch it. So that will be also provided to you. You can check your email boxes or whatever. Um, the link will be given to you. So with that, we uh, thank you for taking time to join to listen to this webinar. Uh, we personally great, um, you know, get personal gratification from helping others achieve their personal goals, making them, uh, you know, feel good about their body, about their looks, helping them to uh, lose their weight. Because it's not just about, uh, you know, looking good. It's also about it's 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 like having obesity or like having a much heavy weight. Like that that's not good for your health as well. Uh, Relatively heavy body would not be that issue, but having excessive weight on your body, having obesity is going to be really bad for your uh, like health-related problems as well. It could be the reason for you to get diabetes. It could be the reason that could trigger your, um, you know, thyroid. Like thyroid could be a reason you could get overweight, but also the overweight could result in your hormonal imbalance. So, uh, you know, we help people achieve their health-related goals as well as their appearance-related goals. So, thank you for taking a time out of your busy schedule allowing us to take part in your day if you have any further questions please uh, post them or you can also even send a private message to support at the rate ascending nature .com. Um, this is the um, like official gmail so if you want to um, send a private message